Linda and I just made a quick negotiation. Both of us have a Chinese New Year celebration to go to, but I'm going to speak much shorter than she is. So, um, on behalf of the Alberta New Democrats and uh, the provincial legislature, I just wanted to bring greetings and our solidarity in your struggle to keep our public postal system flourishing and strong for now and for the future. We know that there is a tremendous challenge before us. We know and we can see that, in fact, many of the, many of the pl things put into place here are designed to, in fact, implode and to dissolve our public postal system. But I know from many constituents speaking to me, elderly, individuals, seniors, the disabled, um, public uh, um, charities, uh, that are doing mail-outs, and a whole range of people that depend on delivery of our postal service is that there has to be a solution by which we don't explode the system, but we reinforce it and make it viable for the future as a public entity. If we do anything less than that, I think, once again, we're selling off the public interest, we're compromising those individuals who depend on the service, and we know that the vast majority of regular working out Canadians will have to end up paying the price for this while very wealthy they get the, the benefit from it. And so, on behalf of the Alberta New Democrats, on myself, you know that we stand with you in solidarity to ensure that our public system is, is kept intact and strengthened for the future, and we will be standing it by your side whatever necessary action it takes to have that take place. Thank you. <laughs> Happy Chinese New Year. Um, here we are, once again, trying to have a voice in the decisions of our federal government because they can't be bothered to ask Canadians what their perspective is on federal policy. And I want to thank the Postal Union for organizing this session so that the public can actually have a voice. This is first and foremost the biggest issue that we're facing in Canada, which is the erosion of the basic democratic process. How on earth Canada Post would make this decision without consulting its very clientele is hard to believe. What is deeply troubling is one can't find a single rationale for this move to end door-to-door -door delivery of, post of postal service. But we just can't see any possible uh, good fiscal policy on this. And my understanding is for the last 20 years, Canada Post has been doing well financially. The only year that they went in the red was the year they locked out our postal workers. And you'll recall uh, that many of us were in that house for 24 hours over three consecutive days fighting against that decision to lock out our postal workers. That was Jack Layton's last speech in the House of Commons. And uh, given the, the situation he was in uh, health-wise, it was a tremendous effort on his part, but that is how much he deeply believes in the rights and interests of the public and the protection of our workers who work so hard to deliver our mail to us every day. Now, it's not that there aren't other solutions. Why is it that this government and its entities make these decisions without coming out first and saying, okay, we see some issues coming forward into the future. There's a number of alternatives. Let's talk about it. I mean, it is your government. The federal government is your government. Um, I can predict 100% what is going to happen when we raise this issue in the House the next week when Parliament resumes. And it's the, it's the response they give time and time again. I know that Minister Ray is going to say, I can't make the decisions on that. It's a Crown Corporation. It's standalone. Well, they sure were there standing up with Canada Post when they locked our postal workers out, weren't they? So they're not there when it's in the public interest speaking out and controlling their, their Crown Corporation. If they can't control their Crown Corporation, maybe it's time to make it part of government again. now we have this conservative majority government they can make whatever decisions they want 
Um, as the official opposition, we will continue to stand up for you. We will continue to be a voice for your concerns, your demands, your rights to public service, your right to be governed in a way that is in your interest. But they do have a majority, and so what I am encouraging you to do, as I encourage all Canadians to do, is to write to the Prime Minister, write to Minister Rate, express your opinion. Now, today we're going to have the facts presented to you. What exactly has Canada Post proposed? What are the implications? What's going on in other jurisdictions? My understanding is in other jurisdictions they have looked to alternatives and those alternatives have allowed them to continue to, to provide door-to-door -door service. Um, I don't think I need to say anything more than that, that um, I'm really grateful that I've been invited. Um, I'm proud of uh, my postie, both at my constituency office, and uh, I'm proud of the posties that come to, to my house. Absolutely fantastic uh, public servants, and uh, they are well-paying jobs, they work hard, and they deserve our support but I know they're there for us too. They want us to continue to have the same level of service, but it's going to be up to you, Edmontonians, Albertans, and Canadians, to voice your opinion to the government. This is your chance to say, Mr. Harper, you're accountable to us. So please make a decision in the interest of the public. Thank you. Take you back to uh, middle of December. So on December 11th, on that morning, you know, the, uh, the Harper government, uh, all of their MPs were headed back to their constituencies for, uh, for the holiday break. And postal workers were working very hard dealing with the heaviest volumes uh, that they've seen in a, in a holiday period. And they were working very hard getting those parcels and communication mail out to people door to door delivery. And when that was, and while that was happening, when postal workers were creating uh, the profits for Canada Post, and, and we don't know what the profits in the last quarter are as yet, we'll, we'll get that information soon. But usually it's the profits in the last quarter that make or break Canada Post. And as was mentioned earlier, Canada Post has made a profit in each of the uh, last 20 years, and uh, except for 2011 when uh, we, we were locked out. But while we were generating those revenues, what were Canada Post executives doing? They were, uh, instead of waiting for those results, they were making announcements about their half-baked plan uh, to cut, cut service, eliminate jobs and jack up postal rate uh, postal rates huge increases in the postal rates so in that plan there's obviously less service for more uh, more costs and elimination of between eight and six thousand uh, postal, postal jobs and the so-called plan also gives a break for those that use postage meters so we can see why Deepak Chopra and his uh, cronies from the uh, from Pitney Bowes are very happy with this particular plan. We can see why Lisa Rake is happy with this plan. It certainly uh, puts the damper on postal workers who have created some significant problems for her in the past. And we can also see why some private investors are drooling over this plan and the potential profits that may come out of post office privatization which is the road that this, uh, these cuts are leading to. They're asking people to accept less and pay more for it. Nobody else likes their plan. Not the 33% of householders that currently receive door-to-door -door delivery, and many of the 25% that do receive a CMB delivery, they don't like the plan either. They're going to see their, uh, their rates go up and, uh, and, and, not, and no improvement in the service that they're receiving. They experience theft, vandalism, litter. There's uh, environmental degradation because of, because of not only the litter problem, but because instead of having one individual going through a community dropping off the mail to each individual household, we'll have individuals from those householders all having to travel to a centralized point. And that certainly is not good for our carbon footprint. 
not customers who have to pay more for sending out birthday cards and that won't even be delivered to the recipients at home. And certainly not the small businesses who are going to uh, pay more for their own postage, but they also are going to have to absorb costs for having their mail picked up and delivered to their, their point, uh, point of business. There, we're, we're seeing offloading of costs, again, from the post office onto the individual recipient. Certainly, municipalities aren't going to be happy with this plan. They're going to have to deal with locating the CMDs, uh, traffic problems, lighting problems, the problem of litter, and as I mentioned, the environmental impacts. And people that really, really do care about the economy aren't going to like this plan because it eliminates the six to 8,000 jobs and all of the spin-offs that come from those, uh, those well-paid, unionized jobs in their communities. So nobody else can see why Deepak Chopra, after three years of being the president and CEO of Canada Post, can come up with only this plan in order to, uh, uh, to, as he says, save the post office. He's not saving the post office. He's taking, he's taking apart the post office and making it so that the government will have no alternative but to privatize and sell it off to the highest bidder. So, how is Canada Post trying to sell this plan? Well, they're drastically exaggerating the problems. You know, when, when we hear about uh, the, uh, the statistics on people receiving centralized delivery, uh, I already said about it, it's on, you know, Canada Post is saying, well, well, 33% uh, uh, receive uh, centralized delivery. Well, no, it's not, it's not true. It's only 25%. And, uh, also, they're, they're talking about the huge problem with the Canada Post pension plan. Well, look, the day before the cuts were announced, the government solved the pension plan problem at least for the next four years. And there are things that can be done over the next four years to ensure that the pension plan is sustainable and self-supporting. So, the, the uh, rationalization of the current solvency deficit and pension plan just doesn't hold water. So we as the union have put the government and the corporation on notice that we're going to fight this plan. We will work with all of our allies to overturn the plan. We will work with community groups, with seniors, with the disabled and their organizations. Uh, small and medium-sized businesses that want to work with us to push back this plan, we certainly will work with them. Obviously, labor groups are on side with us, and any community organizations that want to become involved and try to push back the plan, we will work with them. So, and what will Harper say, and, uh, and uh, Lisa Rave as well, they'll, they'll say, as was, as was mentioned earlier, they will say, well, it's a Crown Corporation, it's arm's length, we have, uh, it's their decisions, and he'll try and distance the government from the decisions of this, uh, of this uh, uh, corporation. But you know, he could honor the commitment the government made back after the mandate review in 2008. And he could honor the commitment that's set out in the Postal Service Charter, and he could listen to community groups. And that's, we're starting this process with meetings like this, to get the input of uh, the people that actually own the post office to be able to take the message back uh, to, to Harper what, uh, what should actually be done and not follow down this road of deregulation and privatization. So if Harper wants to decimate our post office, he's in for a fight. And if he doesn't listen to us and he doesn't listen to the people of Canada, he is going to be on the losing end of this fight. <laughs>